So, uh, John of John Audio, how do you mm. stay motivated? Tell us. Man, that is a <laughs> that is a tricky one because, like, first off, I, I do want to dispel the myth out there that staying motivated isn't a thing where it's like, I feel motivated. I'm going to go do something. And sure, that can happen, right? You can feel motivated to go do something. Absolutely. And that's great. But nine times out of 10, the motivation comes after you start doing what you're doing, right? If you're going to the gym, if you're, if you're a gym guy, not every single time, you're like, I want to get up, get my gym clothes on, get my gym bag, get in the car and drive all the way. Like, that's the worst part of it. But once you get there, you're like, okay, this ain't so bad, right? So like, right. if you're trying to do sound design, if you're trying to make a track or something, you don't really feel like doing it. Just push yourself past that point, get onto your computer and then just start making something. And before you know it, you're going to start grooving. Like, I like this. And then you kind of start getting it. And that's when the motivation kind of comes. Is that something that happens with you? I mean, do you, do you does that happen to you at all? Well, that's, to me, that's a, uh, you know, sort of talking about keeping the fire alive. You know what I'm mm. saying? How do you keep that fire burning? And the first thing that I kind of wanted to mention off of that was, um, you know, I see a lot of people I hear who, who think that you should be in a certain place at a certain time in their life. And there's absolutely no timeline for your progress. Right. So mm. like, you know what I'm saying? So if you feel like, oh, I'm behind, uh, you know, if you're looking out into the, to the, the great unknown and you're like, I see all these other producers and they're all shining, they're all doing this great stuff. And you feel like you're behind, I, you're, you're not behind. You're at your own spot, wherever you are and wherever you are is unique. Right. Right. So what motivates me is realizing that no matter how, you know, much progress or how little progress I make in a certain day, like it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm exactly where I need to be. Right. And there's always room and there's always going to be time uh, for me to do what I need to do. So that's what keeps me motivated is knowing that, you know, I, I can, there's always another day around the corner, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The sun will rise again. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, so even if you're just a total beginner or you're somebody who's more advanced, right? There's no timeline for your progress. And it's almost uh, like stick where you're at, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, be okay for sure. with that. Like if you're on a freeway, if you're driving somewhere, there's people in front of you. Absolutely. Sure. But there's because, also people behind you. Right. Because what can happen is, is if you feel like you're not making progress, that's a demotivation for a lot of people. They go, oh, you know, this is too hard for me or I can't make progress in this certain area. Um, I think that's, you know, we should also talk about like <laughs> tips, tips to avoid, you know, not, you know, being frustrated or like getting you know, fed up with the process because I meet mm. a lot of producers out there who kind of almost, they fall off, right? They fall off the, the treadmill or they just quit because they're like, this was, you know, not my thing. Right. Uh, and when I found music production, I mean, I've always been a music producer, but like when I really started investing all of my time and energy into music, uh, you know, I, I, there was no question about, am I doing the right thing? Is this for me? Not, it was just like, okay, I'm into this, but it's not, it's not the same for everybody. You know, like sometimes some people just kind of go, oh, wow, that would be cool if I could do that. And then they reach a certain point where it's like, oh my God, this is actually more complicated than I thought it was. Sure. Or maybe you need a certain level of talent. You actually don't need, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not a talent issue or a skill issue. It's just a matter of like your time, your energy and how much you want to put into it. Now, that being said, uh, you know, uh, it's not like you should just like hit the brakes and like, you know, put it in coast mode and, you know, try to like, <laughs> right, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, but I, I truly believe that uh, there are ways to manage um, you know, how to stay motivated, especially when working in a DAW or just keep going on your electronic music path, whatever it is. Um, so that's what we can talk about today. You know, tips yeah, to stay motivated. The, stay that's a good point. You brought the frustrating thing up because I, th I think, and I, and I felt victim to this too, where you're trying to do something and it's frustrating because you can't do it. And instead of being frustrated, maybe look at it in a different light, maybe look at it like you're trying to learn something and that's a cool concept to think in your head. You're trying to learn something. You're trying to get this under your, your belt, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's a cool thing. There's something to strive towards, you know, like diving into the grid and Bitwig recently. I've been a big fan of Polarity's videos. Not sure if you've watched some of his stuff, but sure, yeah. he made a really cool one. And it was kind of more of like a, a pep talk. And those are some of my favorites. And somebody asked him, like, so how do I how do I learn all these modules? You know, this could apply for like vis -a -vis or Cardinal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, how do I learn all these? Do I do I look at the manual and try to learn every single module and how it works? And his answer was kind of interesting. It's like, you you can do that. Sure. I mean, you, you know, you can press the F1 and look at what the module does, but you have to experiment with it. You have to kind of just learn it by kind of doing it right. And, mm -hmm. and just having that, you never can finish learning everything. And that's the fun part, right? You can't get to that level and knowing that, that you can't get to that final level. I know everything that's impossible. And that's a cool mm -hmm. thing, right? Because we learned everything. 
it would be kind of boring. So be happy in that frustration, I would say. At least yeah, I get to that. I, I often tell people to just focus on one thing at a particular time. Don't try to learn it all in one day. You can't oh, learn yeah. it. You can't, you can't learn it. You can't <laughs> no. become an amazing composer, an amazing audio engineer. Because like I've, I've said in previous podcasts, to be a producer means you have to be the whole band. You have mm-hmm. to be everything. You have to be oh God, someone yeah. who's good at uh, drum percussion, someone who's good at uh, making bass lines, uh, you know, someone who's actually really good at playing on the keyboard, if you playing keys, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, you can't learn all of that in one day. And especially when it comes to, you know, like the mixing and the mastering and things like that, those are extremely technical subjects which take years of practice, yeah, right? It takes time. That's the ingredient time. Oh yeah. Right. And there's people who get paid to do this for a living. Right. So it's like, you can imagine mm-hmm. like there's people that's their, that's their whole profession. They are mixing engineers. They are mastering engineers and yes. they've studied for years and they've practiced for years to get to the level they're at. Now that does not mean that you can never mix or master a track. No way. Like everybody can do that. Everybody can learn how to do that. Uh, but you should try to just stick with one single thing at one single time. Like, okay, today I'm going to learn about maybe, you know, how to, how to do subtractive EQ, right? That's a, that's a basic concept. Just like, mm-hmm. okay, what is subtractive EQ? And then how do I use it? And what, what situation would I use it in? That's one thing you could learn. Another right. thing you could learn is just pick a particular plugin. Like, okay, I'm going to learn how to use Serum or Hive or whatever. Like I'm going to learn how to use this plugin and maybe some of the nuances about the plugin, like that you don't really know. Like, I don't really know how to use the mod matrix. So maybe I should learn what the mod matrix is and yeah. then I can figure out what it does and then how do I use it in my own productions, right? That, that kind of thing. Like there's so many uh, like little tiny things that you could focus on one every day or one every week or one every month. It doesn't, or even each time you sit down, right? Um, now, outside of that, there has to be a, a sort of like, uh, a pathway to like actually making progress, right? It's not just about learning. It's about like taking what you learn and applying that to music production. So if you can sort of, I think that that's a, it's a two way river there. And if you can sort of like strengthen that connection, because I'm always juggling between the two things, I'm learning something new and then I'm putting it into use. Right. That's or a I'm, good point. Right. Yep. It's like you, mm-hmm. there has to be a consistent back and forth between those two things uh, to, to, to allow progress to happen because if you get stuck in one and not the other, right. It's, there's never going to be, there's never going to be a forward momentum, I think. So, cause you can't know it all at the beginning. You also can't, you also can't focus all on learning and never make a, a single track. Right. Right. And maybe the issue, maybe the issue would be like, how do you make more tracks? Like, how do you write more? And I think that goes into, you know, part of the, I think the book you wanted to mention, like staying in the mental game, like yes. being being an electronic music producer or just a music producer in general, how do you stay in the game, right? How do you keep that fire going mentally so you can, you know, get beyond the whole like uh, imposter syndrome, like I, I shouldn't be doing this. This is for this is for professionals only, or like, right. or am I really an artist? You know that kind of thing. I've encountered. I mean, personally, I've encountered those feelings. You know what I mean? Like I've encountered all that. Like I've mm. gone through the whole gamut. I think anybody who's been in the game long enough has has run into that at some point like it's like trial by fire that you kind of have to just go is. through it those really things you know is. what i mean it really is because you do like you could you could dabble in it for say a week a month a year or whatever and not have anybody notice that you're even doing it or whatever then all of a sudden you're like huh like i'm about to release my first album am i really an artist you know am mm. i really somebody who's doing this like is this something that's happening to me like right and that's something you gotta face like who am I as an artist? Who am I as, a, you know, anyway, we kind of got off topic there, but I think going back to the whole, like, you know, staying in the mental game, there's a strong component to say that it's not just about the music production. It's not just about the learning. There's also like a mental aspect to it that you really have to be on top of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and there's, th- there's things too, where it's like, I think sometimes you have to figure out what you don't like, you know what I mean? Because like there's <laughs> things that we might want to get into and we're like, this is kind of cool let me follow that timeline. You kind of go down through it and you realize maybe this one isn't for me and kind of being okay mm-hmm. with that. you know, like yeah. I, I do like doing like DSP stuff, you know, like bringing up juice and maybe trying to code a plugin and it's fun. But then at the end of the day, I'm like, I really more like just producing sounds or sound design itself, you know, like, yeah. So while I enjoy some of that coding stuff, it made me realize that now I have a broader understanding of that, but it's not necessarily something I want to put my full time into. So mm-hmm. like, being honest with yourself and realizing what you maybe don't want to do can kind of steer you into what you do want to do. 
Yeah. Because you still have to have that fire, right? That log on the fire to keep things oh burning. Oh my God. You know? For sure. Yeah. And there, I've run into a lot of things that I go, oh my God, I never want to do that again. Or that's something that I'm really not into. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You're right. It's just about, it's, it's about finding your dislikes as much as your likes. Mm-hmm. Right. And then leaning into those likes and making them strengths. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really like to do this and therefore I can be good at it. Now, some people may not like to mix their tracks. I didn't like to mix my tracks for a long time. I was like, this is, I'm, I'm, because I thought I was bad at this. Like I was under the assumption, Hmm. or at least I was telling myself the story that I was bad at mixing. And that becomes a sort of a, a long running mental game that I was playing myself. Like, I was like, I really don't, I, the tracks aren't coming out the way I was getting feedback on it. That was negative. And I was like, maybe this is for real. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just can't hear. Turns out um, I just needed to sort of like elevate my uh, listening perception, right? Of how mm. the frequencies and how I perceive sound. And then after I did that, I started to really understand the nuances of how to manipulate audio. And that's a huge deal that a lot of people don't even talk about this, that audio is an invisible art form. You're playing with sound that you can't even see really without the visual spectrums that we have nowadays, but like you can't even see it. So you're supposed to know how loud a bass is based on what your own inner perception or like, <laughs> right. Yeah. You yeah. know, like how loud, how loud, how loud is your pad supposed to be? Cause someone told you how loud it's supposed to be, or can you hear the, how mm. loud these certain elements are, especially when you have a whole mix going right. There's a whole, like, it's, it's a, it's a Jedi art form, dude. Let's be honest. It's like, you're, you're literally manipulating frequency in yeah. invisible space. So <clears throat> that being said, there's, there's plenty of like guidebooks out there for it, but really it does come down to your own individual ability to hear mm. and perceive sound. Right. And how, you know, whether that's artistically or that's technically it's, it's a whole separate thing. So anyway, I, I was like telling, yeah. yeah, it's, it's trippy, right? So I was telling myself I wasn't good at mixing, wasn't good at mixing. So then I discovered the pink noise mixing trick and I'd, oh, yeah. I, I started doing a lot of other things that, to help my, you know, I got new monitors, things like that. And I turned out, it turns out I was like, okay, I'm not that bad at this because I, I, I did not give up. And that's kind of motivating too. I didn't you know? quit. I was like, I, there's no way I'm going to get, I'm no way I'm going to make this an, a viable career if I don't keep going, you know, this is something that I'm, I'm considering myself, a, a, you know, I, I'm, I'm an artist. This is what I do, right? I can't make another album if I can't mix it. So I'm gonna have to keep going, keep pushing myself. Mm-hmm. It's not like my first albums were bad. It's just that I wasn't getting the results that I really wanted. Cause I was really trying to reach towards a high, high level. But that's good uh, though, because you realize what you don't want. And after yeah. a while you figure like, okay, I don't want this. I don't want this. And eventually mm-hmm. you're going to come to say, Oh, this is what I want. Like, you know, when, when you finally start getting the tracks that you like, or like the sound that you want, you put that in your car, you're like, Hell yeah. This Hell is cool. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like that feeling is so motivating and yeah. you can get to that. Just don't give up. Keep right. Going. So going back to the first thing that I said in this podcast was there's no timeline for you, you know, whoever's listening, there's no timeline. That is absolutely 100% true. If someone told me at the beginning of my ambient career, right. Or my music, electronic music production career, they said, Hey, it's going to take you like eight years to master this mixing stuff. I'd be like, what? Like eight years. Like, come on now. Like that's a long time. But it was, Mm. it was eight years until I finally got a handle on it. You know what I'm saying? So there's really no time. That was my personal timeline for somebody else who maybe just got out the gate and released the first sound with SoundCloud and it it was a banger and they got signed by a label or something. You know what I'm saying? They're like, I nailed it the first time. You know what I'm saying? That was their timeline and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what it took to get them to where they needed to be. Right. That's right. It's like the freeway thing. You could be stuck in traffic and then there's that one guy that just sp- speeds by you on the left hand side. You're like, damn it, dude. You know what I mean? Like that <laughs> yeah. happens to all of us. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, that's, that's fine. It is what it is. Right. And so, um, you know, that's, that's part of what keeps me going too is, is realizing that there are, and like I told you, I was trying to, re- the reason why I felt like I wasn't good at mixing, cause I was trying to reach the highest level. I was like, these mm. tracks have to be professional sounding. They have to like be, you know, I, uh, this is like my, my shot at a Grammy, you know what I'm saying? I was like, come right. on now, like, let's right. go to the highest level. Um, because that's where, that's where I wanted to go. And that's where I, that's why I also, I always strive to make my music the best it can possibly be. Now for other people that might not, it might be different. They might be like, I'm just trying to make a good track, dude. Like, I'm not trying to win a Grammy. I'm not trying to like make a hit record. I'm just trying to like get my track out there. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the same goal that I had when I first started. You know, it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's weird too because I think sometimes maybe it's different for other people, but 
I've always noticed when I try to like, this is going to be my specific goal that I, that I have to hit nine times out of 10. It's like you get frustrated because you don't hit it. Mm-hmm. And if you just kind of just relax, do your thing, learn mm-hmm. what you want to learn at your own pace yep. before you know it, you're like, Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There's yeah. that goal. It'll yeah. be in your rear view mirror before you know it. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I encountered this. I think I mentioned this on a previous podcast. I, I, I encountered this a lot in my career as a guitar teacher. Hmm. A lot of adults came into me expecting that they would be like good at on day one, or they'd be like within a week. They're like, what? and they, they often ask me like, what kind of progress can I expect if I put in certain amount of oh, time and wow. a certain amount of day? And I'm like, that's an open-ended question. How am I question? supposed to tell you that? Like, you, this is this is completely up to the individual. It's like there's a skill and talent level that you have to like, you know, you have to like, you have to at least have that as a basis, to even if you want to get to where you want to go. Right. But I think I think as as adults, we you know, because everybody listening to this is pretty much you know a grown adult who's already making their own cognizant decisions about, you know, what they should be good and what they shouldn't be good at in life. And maybe that was because someone told them that, or maybe that was because they, they formed their own beliefs around it. Um, but what, what, what was I supposed to say? Like, are you, oh, sure. It's going to take you exactly, you know, one month and a day to, wow, to be, yeah, how do you answer a question like that? I mean, how there's do you so answer many variables like that, in that, right? So reflecting that back on each individual self, how are you supposed to answer that for yourself? Right. You have there is no there is no answer to that. The only answer is how much are you going to put into it? How much are you going to invest in yourself? Mm -hmm. Right. And then keeping that fire going, making new goals for yourself. When you reach your goals, set new ones. Right. When you when you accomplish that thing, if you get that if you get that track single out, if you get that album out, you're like, huh, okay, now I got to do it again. Right now. I got to Now I got to figure out another way to do it. Like. For me, like it's always, especially at our level, like John, you and I, we've produced several albums. We've done a lot of different things in the audio world already. Right. And it's like, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, okay, like we've, we've, we've checked a lot of the boxes. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the ways that I like to stay motivated is to learn something that I'm totally not familiar with. Like just completely dive into a topic that I have no yep. idea about. I like that. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm dude. saying? Like, like yeah. and for like a couple of years ago, like it, actually like last year and the year before that it was modular. I was like, I don't really know how to use this. I don't really know like all the ins and outs of this whole world. And I invested myself into it and it paid off. Cause I was like, wow, now I know yeah. so much more about synthesis. It's like, did you have the feeling where like, once you went from modular back to like serum or any other synth, you're like, yeah. this is so easy. <laughs> Everything is set yeah. up. There's no like gate in for oh like my, my envelopes. Yeah. What? But it's all set up. There's at the no same wires. time, it, it, it brought a whole different perspective about mm-hmm. what a synthesizer could be. And yep. like, I was like, kind of like, I, I was shook. I was like, man, this is crazy. Like these modular people, I'll call them modular guys have had such a great advantage the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh my God. Yeah. It's like a whole different level. It's like, it's a whole different level. It's a whole different (laughs) level, but at the same time, like, you know, okay. The modern conveniences of having a fully polyphonic stereo synthesizer are something you take for granted Mm -hmm. when, as soon as you go into the modular world, because you have to start with a, with an envelope and a VCA and a filter and an oscillator, you know what I'm saying? And then then you learn problem solving too, because there's a lot of stuff you might overlook. Yeah, totally. Totally. You know, that, I think that's something that Omri can really relate to as well. You know, like how he's saying in the beginning, you know, he's like, I called it like philosophy proactive. And then, you know, it's, it kind of made me think that, um, especially with modular, like once mm-hmm. you, if you step into that and like, and try this out for yourselves, I had a lot of benefits and I'm sure Chris did as well. Like mm-hmm. just spend some time with it. Try to not look at your regular sense for a little bit and just kind of just get a basic patch going, maybe a couple oscillators, get a mixer in there and then maybe learn, okay, how do I, how do I route effects, right? And if you route it directly in line, so now you're kind of doing like a dry wet thing, or mm-hmm. you can put it on a mixer and do like a send. And kind of once you start wiring that up, your brain really starts to understand how this actually works yeah. and it solves these problems. And that's another thing that, that Polarity was saying too, where sure you can find tutorials on certain things, but a lot of it is having fun in the in the problem solving, just having fun in general. Like don't be frustrated and looking at all these modules, all these things. And how do I, how do I understand this all? I'm on like a deadline, you know, like it's your time. Like you're saying, it's your time kind of go through that and just have fun. Enjoy the experience, right? It's not going to be forever. So might as well have fun while you're doing it. 
Sure. I mean, that's that's yeah. a huge and motivational thing for me. For those who are listening to this podcast for the first time, we're not talking about taking a loan out on your house and purchasing a $10,000 modular rig. You oh, know what I'm saying? No. Like, absolutely <laughs> no. not. We're talking about this free uh, Euro rack emulation software, um, you know, VCV rack and Cardinal specifically, uh, where it's like you can you can use all the modules that you could in the physical world, but they're all, it's just all in software and you're connecting these modules together and doing things like that. Um, that's what we're talking about. Um, you know, modular, you know, in a, in a physical sense, it, there's a high level of investment before you even get into it. Like you could start with oh, absolutely. A, you could start with say a thousand dollar modular kit, but you're not going to have much. That's maybe five or six modules to get you going. And you're only going to be limited to those five or six modules. And what you can do mm -hmm. is what you can do. Yeah, granted, it's going to be really fun because you have little patch cables and you can like wire it up and twist the knobs with your fingers and all that. <laughs> then it's going to come to the point where you're like, oh, you want to go stereo. Oh, right. OK. But, but hey, VCB <laughs> Rack and Cardinal are free uh, emulations of the same software. And they sound, in my opinion, just about as good. Uh, so, you know, that's what we're talking about. Now, the, the concept, though, is the same. It's it's using the whole like a modular synth has always been a modular synth. It's, it's taking different modules and different components to create these synthesizers from scratch. Or if you want to even call them synthesizers, I don't even know how to explain that to someone who doesn't know what we're talking about. But um, yeah, so I mean, that was one topic that I decided to go into. Right. Another one for you might be like, OK, I just want to um, learn how to do chord progressions, right? I learn. I want to learn how to make good chords that make a good track that really fit the style that I want to, you know, invest in. I meet a lot of people who are like, I want to make music in the style of this, or I want to make music like this person, right? But then you have to break down. Okay, what are those components? What are the, what are the components that are making up that music? The first, you know, in the first place, like. Is he using some sort of like lo-fi, you know, filter on it? Like, is it is he using some sort of like, is it drenched in a reverb? Is he using uh, field recordings or external sources? Is it synthesis? Is it not synthesis? You know, there's all kinds of things that make up, you know, the artist track. And sometimes it's hard to pick that stuff out. I understand mm -hmm. that. Like, it's sometimes it's hard. And sometimes it's hard to even like sit in front of a synthesizer like Serum or Hive or something and recreate that stuff. Cause you just hit the sawtooth or you hit the sine wave and it's like, brrr, and you're like, okay, that's <laughs> now this, what? <laughs> that, now what? That sounds nothing yeah. like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So therefore I would also recommend to stay motivated is to start experimenting with the things that you do have. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like driving into the unknown is sometimes the greatest way to get to the known. If that makes sense. Like you're, you're trying new things um, to almost without um, any expectation of what the result will be. I right. do that. I do that a lot where I'm like, OK, I'm just going to I'm just going to screw around in the synthesizer. And then whatever happens is I'm, I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to say, oh, this was what I wanted or not what I wanted. I'm just going to let it whatever happened happen. And sometimes it comes out like sounding like complete noise. Sometimes it, it comes out sounding like something I did not expect. You know what I'm saying? Like there's different levels to experimentation. And yep. but the most important thing is is that you're trying things new without really thinking about like, OK, I, I want this to sound like this. It's sometimes you just have to let it go. You just have to experiment just for experimentation's sake. And that's how you break new ground, because how does anything new ever get created? It gets created right. through trying something that you've never done before. You yeah, know, if you think, you know, your plug in that you have right now, chances are there's a certain way to use it that you may not have. Thought you of may not point, have thought of, you know, and, right. And, and I don't think that's. You know, you could search for answers. You could search all day long for pigments tutorials and hive tutorials and all this kind of stuff. Or you could just try things yourself and see what happens. And maybe you'll figure out how they work along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the other day I was using pigments on a stream and I was like trying things that I'd never thought of doing before. And I was like, whoa, this is so Ooh. cool. Like, oh, my God, like I, I never thought of doing this, but I never even I never tried. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just like the fact that I was in the moment and I was just pushing my personal envelope, right? And that's motivating too, right? There's like trying mm -hmm. new things and you come up with a cool yep. thing and you're like, whoa. And that almost sparks another fire. And then from right. there, it's a, like a spread of a timeline. You're like, okay, yeah. I did that. What if I did that same concept to this other patch I was working on? Totally. And who knows where that's going to be? You know totally. what I mean? Yeah. So um, that's, that's a huge part of it for me is learning something new and or trying something new that I've never done before. And, you know, you don't, I mean, you have a lot of people who listen to the show, they already have gear, 
They already have software. They already have things that they could use. So it's not about buying something new or trying to, you know, level up your game that way. It's about using what you have and forcing yourself to be put into a situation where you're just like, oh my God, I'm going to try making this cool thing or making a cool sound. Mm-hmm. Cause I, you know, it's often some of the hardest stuff to make, I think is some of the sounds that we've never heard, you know, like I, I can make a a good point. I can make a pad all day long. I can make a sequence all day long. I can make a bass with my eyes closed, but those sounds that come in the beginning of a track and those like really interesting sound designy stuff. Oh, those are so fun. They're fun, but they're really hard to make sometimes. Like it's like, it's really, I, this is a side note, but I, I watched a, um, uh, a documentary of a well-known uh, video game company called Bungie. Have you heard of Bungie? They made, oh, yeah. oh, they made Halo yeah. and they made Destiny. Mm-hmm. Their sound team is freaking nuts. Like they are really into what they do. You know what I'm saying? And they use like sampled stuff. They use modular recordings. They use weird ass instruments. It's almost like they're like the spectrosonics of the video game world. You know what I'm saying? They, they really go wow. hard on their sound design. And you can tell, watch that. you can tell when you play their games, you're like, Holy crap, like not just the sound of the weapons, but it's like the sound of the world and the environment and the convolution reverbs they use and the crackling of the grass. And when you pull out a magic spell, it's like, and all the, you're oh, like, dude, yeah, you're like, no like, way. That's like, amazing. Like, where did that come from? You know what yeah, I'm saying? We've never heard it before. Let's, we've never exactly heard it what before. Saying, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So all these these sound designers have to come up with new ways to, to express these things that are happening in the fan fantasy world with things that are already here in reality using sound design. It's nuts. Yep. I love it. And so I'm like, okay, that really inspires me. You know what I'm saying? Because that means that they've taken that. I mean, these guys are paid professionals, but they're still like having that whimsical, playful attitude when it comes to building something new and trying and being creative with it too. Like those totally. guys get so creative. Like, yeah. do you know, do you know Mick Gordon? Have you heard of that guy before? No, I never heard of him. <clears throat> oh my. So he does a, he did the music for doom, which is an insanely good. <laughs> oh yeah. Like that dude's sound design is unreal. If you ever like, j- just go watch some gameplay or something like that on YouTube and, sure. and listen to the sound design. The new doom. Some, the, 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 the yeah. remake. Yeah. Yeah. So like go, go check out some of that music, but the most important, most interesting is his presentation that he gives. And if I find it, I'll link it down in the video description, but <clears throat> long story short, He's like, okay, this game is doom. You know, there's like, it's, it's like hell. It's kind of that vibe. Mm-hmm. So he gets creative in the sense where he brings up Harmer and then he gets a picture and puts like six, six, six on the picture, right? <laughs> brings that and puts that into the spectrum view, which is a lot of fun to do, right? So you can get this sound. And then if you look at through a spectrum view, you can see six, six, six. I'm like, ah, I've done that before. That's really cool. So I was like really engaged. And then he blows my mind with this one. <clears throat> so there's this song going on, like this sound music and this, it's kind of going crazy, right? On the left-hand side, it's this track, what he has on the right-hand side. It's the same thing, but the phase is flipped or the polarity is inverted. Right. Hmm. Right. So, okay. If, if it's in stereo, it sounds okay. Right. Cause there's like stuff moving going on, but the moment you collapse that into mono, everything, all that music is inverted. Right. So where it turns to silence, but in the signal, there's something that says, Jesus loves you. <laughs> and I was like, that's Jesus Christ. Mick Gordon. <laughs> how, wow. did, how, did, how did he, how did he figure out how to do that? I don't, he's just, he's a, he's such an intelligent person, right? And there's, I've, I've binge watched a lot of his interviews and he'll talk about like a subject where some people will say what DAW sounds best. And he's done all the, all the null testing. And mm-hmm. he's like, they basically sound the same. There are some differences in the sense that like how fading works. And if you fade something in and block mm-hmm. size and stuff like that, like that's yeah. some, some different things, but yeah, his brain is just interesting in how he approaches sound design. Most of those distorted things like that are just mm-hmm. sine waves. They're going right. through lots of distortion, lots of more distortion, mm-hmm. going through like weird pedals and stuff. And it's a cool presentation. I highly recommend to watch that. And after I did, I felt motivated and I got, I got on my, on my rig and I wrote an entire like weird sound or song structure kind of thing like that. And it turned out pretty cool. It's very disharmonic, but man, so right. much so, fun. So if you're into sound design, you know, you can take a field recorder, go outside, shatter a window. Yeah. Uh, you can like, you know, drop stuff into a bucket. You can like, you know, Dude, literally. there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. And but you have that, all the effects that you have right, in your rig to the, put that through. Oh my God, all the effects, all the effects you have. So that's, that's something you could get, you know, involved with. Um, mm-hmm. if, if, if that's not your thing, you know, you could take your, you know, your synthesizers and start detuning your oscillators, um, making new waveform shapes through, um, you know, like manipulate, like using FM, things like that, yeah. frequency modulation, um, you know, and then using envelopes to distort that even further and like, you know, manipulate the sound. Like 
there's all kinds of ways, you know, and if it's just music you're after, then yeah, you're, you're going to have to push yourself in the musical sense too. But you know what? I think yeah. one thing, one point that I wanted to make that I really wanted to bring up was realizing that everything that you're going through, it's already inside of you. Like it's already even, you can even say that it's already done. Like I've already, I, no matter what goal I have, it's all inside of me. It's just waiting to be unlocked. You know yeah, what I'm you're, saying? You're passing through that information to your you're, computer. Like, right. It's yeah. all inside of you and you're just filtering it through. You know what I'm saying? And so whatever goal that you have, you've already achieved that goal. If you believe yeah. that you've already achieved that goal, you already have. Just say that it's done. Say that you say that you've already achieved it and you're going to you're going to take inspired action towards that goal. You know, this is a different topic, but I think it goes along with the whole motivation thing, you know, is you believe it, then you achieve it. Right. Yeah. So if you can really feel that like that's that that goal is that the desire of yours is so real that you can reach out and touch it. All you're going to do is take inspired action and move towards that goal. You're just going to draw that goal towards you. You're going to pull it you know, closer and closer in. Right. Yep. And there's so, you, so much stuff out there, dude. And like, oh, yeah. what's cool is, uh, th- you might like this one as well. If you're thinking, okay, we have to get a field recorder and record stuff and you kind of look them up and you might be discouraged how much they cost. If you have a phone in your pocket, you'll be surprised how, how good that can come out. Right. Mm. I would suggest pause the video, get your phone, go to your creaky door in your room, mm-hmm. in, in your room or your house, record that, like er, opening mm-hmm. up, put that yeah. into your dog, run it through Valhalla and then sit back and smile and be like, da, that's badass. And then think, what else could you do? What else could you do? A friend of mine was driving in his car and he's like, you know, when you're driving, you kind of like bang on your uh, steering wheel and like your hood and all that stuff when you're like into a song. And he's telling me that I'm like, yeah, he's like, so I recorded that to one of my songs and then I sampled that and put that into my track. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's an interesting concept right there. How'd it turn out? He's like, it's pretty cool. Like, what? Right. Okay. So so keep your ears open. There's so many different things, you know, if you hear like all around us tapping somewhere, it can all be music. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you loop that, it could be musical. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't oh my have to, God. Right? Yeah. If it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have necessarily have to be just like sound design and extra Foley and stuff. It can be yep. musical, right? You could actually put harmonics into it. Um, you could look up uh, on, on, on EQ, like you could use an EQ as a resonator almost. Mm-hmm. If you know absolutely. the exact, if you know the yeah. exact pitch of a frequency that you're trying to hit, you can boost that frequency in an EQ and it could be a resonating device. And put that through distortion. Oh, right. man. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Or right? if you have a cat, have your cat meow and record that and put that through Valhalla. It sounds hilarious. It's just oh, really yeah. funny. But if you, have an electric, but you, yeah. if you have an electric toothbrush, it probably resonates at a certain key. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you just the, just do that toothbrush. Like one of the first pieces, people to turn me on to that idea was uh, Trifonic. And this was back in 2012. And I was like, oh, okay. He like, he like went off on this. Like it was some revolutionary thing but at the time it was kind of like huh that's kind of unique that's kind of cool like so he was recording his electric toothbrush and yeah and he made a, a whole i think he made a whole track out of it and he and he wow. it was one of the first he was kind of one of the first guys to do electronic music tutorials on youtube okay and uh yeah he's like here i made a whole track out of my toothbrush you that's know what i'm cool. saying and it was like the from the the on position to the scraping of the things to the doing all that kinds of stuff like he realized mm-hmm. that he had the, he had this epiphany moment and that was back 12 years ago. Like as he was brushing his teeth, he goes, that's probably in key. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like, yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? Like that was the, that was yeah. the thing. That and he, if it's not, we have the tools to make it in key. Right. Like, we we have the that. tools to make it in key or you can yeah. just, you know, get Omnisphere and there's already some electric toothbrush stuff in there anyway. Um, so, uh, like yeah. That's super motivating. Just hearing all the things and looking around and we're kind of maybe oh. wondering, how could I sample that? Yeah. How could I? How can I turn that into something? How cool? can you I know? turn that like, into something cool? Yeah. yeah. So the cat and reverb is pretty funny though. If, you, oh if, my God. if you've never done that, it's pretty oh <laughs> it's my so God. hilarious. And there's so many great reverbs out there too, that are not paid reverbs. Like there's really good free ones out there. I was reminded mm. um, of this reverb that came out last year. It was in the KVR challenge called Solaris. I don't know if you mm. heard about this it guy named Adam, familiar, Adam Sabo who created Viper. Um, he created another piece of software. I forgot the name of it, but anyway, he won the KVR challenge with this reverb called Solaris. You can download it, go look it up. It's a free shimmer style reverb that is Ooh. just so spacey and so good. Like I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I was really hype on it. I made a YouTube short about it when it was released and I forgot about it. And then I was yeah. re- reminded that how good it was recently. So there's that they're super massive. Yeah. I was going to um, say super massive is free as well. Of course. That's a good yeah. free one. Um, and there, of course, you know, the, there's tons of great free reverbs, reverbs right in your DAW. Ableton's got a great one. I'm sure Bitwig has a good reverb. Um, there's yeah, so a lot of the stuff we already have in our, in our DAWs or we've mm-hmm. already paid for the software or there might be free stuff, you know? So sure. Yeah. Like there's a, you know, Mortal Kombat, that video game, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so 
there's some video out there of them doing the Foley for it. And that's so interesting. Like if you look around, everything can be an instrument if you really want it to be. Yeah. It's just a matter of you, you know, like it's funny, like (laughs) coming from metal stuff, we always thought stuff, you know, like right before like a breakdown hits, you know, it like does some crazy guitarist and it stops for a second and then it goes back into it. Mm -hmm. So like we always thought, what's the funniest thing to put in that spot? And sometimes it's a cat meow, you know, then it goes into it, right? That's kind of funny. (laughs) Or like a can popping open could be kind of funny as well, but kind of just think outside the box like that. Like what around you, like t- take a look around your room. What could you use that as an instrument for? You, you can use I'm, your mouse. You I'm know? so you glad that you brought that. I'm so glad you brought that up too. Cause I mean, think about it. If you, cause I, I come from a guitar background. I, I, I know how to play guitar. Um, I play piano as well, but like, like what, what about the instrumentals pushes them to, to try new things? You know what I'm saying? You're in a, almost a closed system there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like on a guitar, you're, you're, it's a closed system. You're, you, you only have a certain amount of notes, <clears throat> excuse me. You have a certain amount of notes. You have a certain amount of frets, right? What can you do? What pushes the guitar player or what pushes mm-hmm. the instrumentalist to try new things, right? Is it skill? Is it inspiration? Is it talent level? Like, what is it? You know, what makes a good solo? Like what pushed Eddie Van Halen to like really start tapping on his fretboard for the very first time? You know what I'm saying? Like what pushed him to start fingerboarding, whatever, right? So like what pushes, you know, any of the great guitar players to reach those heights that they always have, that they've been known for? You know what I'm saying? I've about that too. Yeah. Like I think that some, I've had some theories about that. I've I've thought that like, maybe there's two kinds of people and this is makes the most sense to me. I could be totally wrong, but I was like, Mm -hmm. there's people who, you know, they come on this earth as a blank slate and they can study the music theory. They can study their instrument. They can get technically proficient at it and they can do really great. There's some people who are born and once they start with their instrument, they almost have like a natural calling to it. Like it just feels natural to them. So they're, so they just naturally become good. Mm -hmm. And then if you pair that technical knowledge with that person, then they become the Eddie Van Halen's. They become those types of people. Right. Yeah. I was unfortunate to be the one that's born with technical. So I'll just read manuals (laughs) and books until I eventually get to that level. Right. So, you know, that's kind of like, you have to know your weaknesses. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think some people are born with both, you know, some people have perfect pitch, right. They can hear something like, Oh, that's a C sharp. I hear that. Some people have to like do ear training and ear training until they get to that level. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's kind of my thought process on it. There's but a weird know, analogy about yeah, that. Yeah. I so so that's what I was saying. Like if you if you think about it, to to be, you know, to do something new on a guitar, you really have to push yourself. You have to push mm-hmm. the boundaries of what's possible for yourself and musically like speaking, like you have to come up with something new. And so, sometimes it happens randomly. Like you'll speak into your pickups right? and you have like, what yeah. the hell is that? You right. Know? And when you write songs, what are you doing? You're breaking new ground in ground that's been treaded over to death. Like it's absolutely like, if you think about the first five frets of the guitar, how many people have faced those first five frets of the guitar? And yeah, wrote, one and two are my favorite. Or no, and, zero and one, I should and, say. You know, and we wrote really good <laughs> songs and the first five frets of the guitar. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just staying right there, right? If in, in electronic music, you're doing the same thing, right? You're doing the same thing. You're doing the same like, okay, here are the same notes. Here's the same plugins. Here's the same everything, but you're pushing yourself and you're driving yourself to reach new heights within that closed system. You know what I'm saying? It makes me smile because I was thinking about this this store when I was like 13 yeah. and like I was with my guitar buddy and he were, were playing some stuff and like I look over and he has his pick, but it's like sideways and he's like scratching on the guitar string uh-huh. and he's making like this like rhythm like and it's like, holy, like that's so weird. Like it sounds cool, right? Then he yeah. makes a riff out of that and like, I think the the cool part about that is like, just try it. Why not? It might, it might be kind of cool. And then like years down the road, I was sitting with my guitar and I was like, I need something to like come into this course. Like there's this buildup. And I was like, what mm-hmm. should I do? I don't have a riff. I tried everything. I'm sitting there for like 20 minutes. I'm like, nothing's coming to mind. So I did like a kind of like a, like a DJ, like waka, 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 my guitar strings in, in time to the track. And it was like, it sounded stupid. But then like when I put the effects on it and I kind of like snuck it in, I'm like, okay, this is actually kind of cool. And then recorded right. a couple passes, put them left, right and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like, even if something that sounds kind of weird and corny and strange, it might be kind of cool. So don't be scared to not try it out. Don't be scared. You, you never know, know. Going back to the, the guitar thing one more time. I mean, for those of you who don't play guitar, you know, it, I, I apologize for going to these little tangents, but one of the, my favorite things to do on the guitar is alternate the tuning, right? Mm-hmm. Alternate tuning guitar is something that has been around for a very long time. Um, but it, you know, I love to see it like kind of gain popularity. I mean, obviously Joni Mitchell was doing it in the seventies. Um, but there's a line, there was tons of different artists, um, too many to name, right. Who were experimenting with different alternate tunings back then. Right. 
But back when YouTube first started, there was a guy named Andy McKee who started doing this like really cool like tapping stuff. And he was following in like the legacy of like Michael Hedges, like doing like really cool rhythmic finger style guitar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In alternate tunings with a custom built, you know, like fretted guitar and everything. Like it was just amazing to me. I was like, whoa. And when he first YouTube launched, like what, in 2008? This is like 2009 or whatever. And like, it was really cool. And then I saw another guy named Eric Mondrain who played his guitar flat and he played his guitar like, like a keyboard. He would just like mm. play the keys like this and he would tap it and he would slap it and do like those kinds of stuff. So instead of holding guitar, like normal people hold guitar, he put it flat on his, on his lap and just started playing <laughs> yeah. it like a keyboard. I was ah. like, Freaking genius! You know what I'm saying? Like he was pushing the boundaries of what was. That's possible. how I play video games with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. People play the thumbs, yeah. but I play with my first two fingers. Like you're weird. I'm like I don't care. This is how I do it. Yeah, <laughs> that reminds so, me of that. So applying this whole like idea of like pushing the boundaries. You know what I'm saying? You have to. That's something that always motivates me. How am yeah. I gonna push my own personal boundaries in this? Because I'm no, I'm no. I the guitars are back there. The keyboard is aside. I'm I'm working in this environment. How am I going to push the boundaries? What am I going to do that's new? You know, what am I yeah. going to do that is pushing that personal envelope of mine to to make it different than my last album, to make it better than my last record? Right. That's what motivates me. I I I, I constantly face that every single time I open up, you know, a new session. I just hit new track, and it's like blank slate. Here we go. Like let's push the boundaries. Let's push my own. Let's see what's possible out there. Let's see what, let's see what we can do today. You know? And that's mm. one of the ways that I love to stay motivated is just, you know, knowing that it's all been done before. Yes. But there's a lot of things that haven't been done before. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's music that hasn't been written. There's, you know, sounds that have never been heard. Oh, and that's so interesting. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there, it's always going to be like that. And for me, that's the endless. Well, that is the, I can't, I, I'll never be able to see the bottom of that. And no matter how much we've talked about this in a previous show, how much AI is able to replicate a certain genre yeah. uh, and how, how much, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't care because you know what? I'm on my own personal evolution and my own personal journey. And I'm here to discover those sounds for myself. And like, if anyone's into AI, like I, I've recently started getting into it and make some cool stuff of it. But like, one thing I think is cool about that is we can use that as inspirational tools. So like a cool idea and uh, this might work for you, might not, but like, so if I think I'm like, okay, maybe if it's getting Halloween time and I want something kind of creepy, I might go into AI and say like, give me a picture that we're in a very old warehouse. It's kind of dark. There might be some weird ambient light that's kind of coming in. There's like industrial pipings and it's kind of dirty inside. Mm -hmm. And then it renders out this image. So take a second and look at that image and like kind of imagine if you were there, what would you hear? You know, if there's these industrial pipes, maybe there's something leaking. So like maybe sample out some drops hitting the ground, put mm -hmm. some reverb maybe on some like ambient air kind of like whoosh, kind of things moving around so like you're creating this space of what you're seeing like this image and then you're going to feel like okay now i'm here now start to add some music to it, maybe add some minor chords in there and kind of a creepy thing obviously you can do this for like a beach and you know have people <laughs> laughing and throwing a beach ball but that's yeah. not me so i'm not gonna lie <laughs> right so do something yeah. kind of like that you know like look mm -hmm. at a picture and what is that picture telling you and that's super in inspiring right mm -hmm. and make a track from that like take something else and transfer that to you, how you interpret that, interpret that to music, how you express yourself. Like that's a really cool idea. And you'll get some interesting things. Artists have been doing this for centuries, whether mm -hmm. they were inspired, you know, by religion back in the day, or they were inspired by nature. They were inspired by the world around them. Um, yeah. you know, it's always, I, I love to, um, I love to go to museums and see art of the past. You know what I'm saying? How to translate that into the future. I've always loved uh, even the art movements of the, of the 50s and the 60s, you know, the 40s, like ex abstract expressionism has always inspired me because it really does remind me of sound in a way, you know, yeah. like the way you would paint on a canvas in a, in a where you can almost see the motion of the paintbrush and you could see all these like abstract expressionist ideas. But they were very musical in a sense because they were performing their art as much as they were yeah. like, like laying down the painting uh, with sound. Your painting with sound. You right. Exactly. I mean? Exactly. So, you know. These these things will it'll never get old for me, at least. I, I hope that everyone listening realizes this is that, you know, authenticity is everything. And your authentic signature is always going to be on your art, no matter what, no matter what yeah. happens, no matter, you know, where you go, wherever you go, there you are. Right. But whatever you whatever you put down, that's yours. You know what I'm saying? And so um, embrace that and realize that that, you know, this is this is something that you can do for the rest of your life. You there's never an end to this, you know, and hopefully 
uh, within that within that path, you'll you'll find some of those victories and some of those goals will be accomplished. You'll, you'll be able to check some of those boxes. You yeah, know? and even something you said in one of our podcasts where you're like, now is the best time oh, yeah. to start doing that. It's like, the tools we have are insane. They're insane. Like you can do whatever, you have a microphone yeah. in your pocket that you can record anything that you want mm-hmm. to bring that into your system and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. You know, and if there's some technical things that you might be stuck on, like, how do I bring this into like a sampler? Wh- wh- how do I find a good sampler? I think the one I found was like Momentum recently, which is a free sampler, which is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. I made a track using that thing. I'm like, what else can you do? You know, mm-hmm. had a, had a, there was a metal fence outside. I'm like, this might be creepy to get a stick and kind of just slightly drag on it to have that like metallic resonance. And I mm-hmm. recorded my phone going along with a, with a, with a fence, mm-hmm. put some reverb on that as well. Move some trash bags around, get a piece of duct tape and open it up and put that to reverb. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm getting weird here, but you know what I'm saying? Hey man, listen, <laughs> like I said, you have to push the boundaries, right? You're yeah, never going to find out what's on the other side unless you actually take the first step, you know, mm-hmm. or just start peeling back those layers, right? What is, what is on the other side of this? Like what? Yeah. You I- got a car, record your engine and pitch that down. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, put some unison on that. Mm-hmm. Shit, right. There's so many ideas. <laughs> it's so fun. Look around, you know? Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, you know, stay also, you know, the last thing I would say is stay like healthy physically, uh, because obviously like being a producer is something that's going to like, it takes time and whether you're sitting or standing, you know, you're going to have to new smoking. Yeah. Right. It's the new smoking. That's why I stand up. Um, and, uh, you know, staying healthy and staying active. And then when I, I find that if I exercise regularly, I eat right, you know, all those kind of things, I'm more inspired when I do come to the DAW, you know, this is something mm. we haven't talked about before, but like an actual like regimen that keeps you like motivated is something it really does help. You know what I'm saying? I'm no longer sluggish in front of my, you know, my art time. Like that's, that's sacred to me. Like my producing time, that's like, that's my, my very most top priority. I always want to get back to that, that place, yeah. whatever else happens in life. You know what I'm saying? I always want to get back to that place. So when I do get back to that place, I want to be as healthy as I can. I want to be as alert as I can, as you know, like as ready as I am to like, you know, do the thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, it's different for everybody. When you play in a band, you're, you're physically in front of an instrument, you're playing with other people. When you're producing on your own, you're sitting in front of a damn computer with a mouse in your hand, you know what I'm saying? And Mm -hmm. you're, and you're clicking and stuff like that. Or, you know, you could go dollars, you know what I'm saying? And have no DAW and maybe the, maybe the computer is just a a tape recorder at that point. And you're just recording and producing and doing all kinds of stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's different for everybody. You know what I mean? But however your process is, you should always come to it with all that energy and all that like inspiration and that fresh perspective, you know what I'm saying? And not let anything get in your way. And if you don't, I like your concept about being healthy like that and yeah. doing exercises. And it kind of, it reminded me of this video I watched a long time ago where, uh, so the guitarist of Rammstein, he would do this mm-hmm. weird thing where he would have this BPM counter, like the, or this heart rate monitor on his, in his wrist. Mm-hmm. And before he start picking up his guitar and start recording something, he would do a lot of pushups, right? And he'd get it to a certain area where he wanted to target it. And he's in that like vibe where his heart's pumping at that tempo. And then he starts writing his track to that. I'm like, I've never right. thought of doing that. That's interesting. So it's I think, physical. It's, it's, yeah. it's physical as, as much as it is mental. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like there is a physical component to it. So um, I think that's a, that's a really important piece. We often don't talk about that as producers. You're supposed to just sit there and be able to like focus on something for hours on end. And that mental focus, it takes energy. Yeah. You, you know take what I'm a saying? Every it so takes often. a lot like, of energy. Like I, 10 minutes I, at least, you know, yeah, when I'm done, with, when I'm done with my work day, I'm freaking tired. I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh my God, I am drained because I've been focusing on something for so long. Um, it's just like, Oh my yeah. God. Like, even though I haven't moved very far, you know, I'm still like, there's something to <laughs> that too. Yeah, there's, there's something to that. Right. 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 So I think everybody, no matter, even if you're not in music production, if you work at a computer, if you work in any sort of job or whatever, like you, you, you get physically yeah. exhausted. Um, I, I used to have this maintenance job where I would like work in, uh, obviously maintenance, you know, electrical stuff or mm-hmm. like some just plumbing, you know, just random odd jobs like that. And our, my hard drummer, he had a desk job and like, you know, we'd all come over after work, you know, he had a different job than I did. And like, he's like, Oh, I'm so tired. I'm like, Dude, how are you tired? Like you sat down all day <laughs> and he's like, no, I, I know, but I'm just, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm like, yeah. you're lying dude. there's no way you can be tired and sit down. But then later on you realize like he was right. He was right yeah, the whole time. Totally. You get exhausted. So you, yeah. you know, I think as human beings, we're built to move. We're yeah. built to stay like up and around and alert and do all kinds of things. So when you stop, your body mm-hmm. is still in that 
like, you know, the engine is still running, you know what I'm saying? Like everything is still, uh, you know, on point. So you have, it doesn't matter what you do. You know what you need is so the, another Rammstein story, the keyboardist, Mm -hmm. he has a treadmill that he locks into his BPM. So he's like walking and moving while he's, he's playing his keys. Yeah. That's, dude, you could use that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Do some, some live stream just on the treadmill moving, right? My, my wife's know? got one in her, in her Amazon car right now. Maybe I'll bring that in the studio. You know what I'm you saying? Walk like, for that, right? Yeah, yeah. This is like, you know, this is like making beats and stuff. Yeah, you know? when you walk to the tempo, you got to feel that, right? That's kind of, kind of a cool idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, hopefully hopefully, all the suggestions that we made have really uh, sort of inspired people, helped people realize that, you know, yeah. like there's, there's so, it's a great big world out there and there's so many opportunities for you. And, you know, like no matter what age you are, what level you are, it doesn't really matter. You can accomplish those goals. You can stay motivated. You can stay in the game and you can do this for Mm -hmm. a long period of time. This is something that you can stay invested in for, you know, a very long term, like a long running momentum. Like I'm doing this, you know, this is my thing. And uh, and there's, there's things out there. Like I I think, I guess a good thing to keep people in their brains, keep people mm-hmm. in their brains, but a good thing to keep in mind, mm-hmm. the world is, there's so much stuff out there. So like, I think we lose motivation sometimes when we open up our dial and like you're saying, you have a, you have a track there and you're like, what now? You know, I think, I think part of the problem is that like, we're not looking at the world as opportunity. We're kind of looking at like, uh, what, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Like look around and let something come to you. Mm-hmm. You know, like another Mick Gordon oh, yeah. thing, he's, he's doing that game. He gets a chainsaw and he records this chainsaw and then brings that into his DAW. And I was like, that's damn, you know, like mm-hmm. stuff like that, like bring yeah. stuff in. Don't, you know, don't be afraid of, of just staying internally. Like you can bring stuff in. Yeah. Another thing I want to mention before we wrap up is I want to, I see a lot of guys out here who are, who feel like they can't keep up for whatever that means to mm. them. Like they can't keep up with either our content or they can't keep up with the, the speed of software that it's moving. Like um, they can't keep up with new releases, things like that. Um, Try not to worry about that. I mean, honestly, like there's people like John and I who are doing this day in and day out. And this is what we do for a living. Um, the audio world moves very fast. You know, we have lots of different like plugins and releases that just change all the time. The whole world is moving very fast. So like, yeah, you know, even if you have a, an hour a week to dedicate to music production, don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Like you will find the time eventually, no matter what life throws at you, there's always going to be ebbs and flows, you know, of, of yeah. time and allocation, things like that. So I mean, I, yeah, I see a lot of guys out here who are like, come out. oh my God, signs, I can't keep up with you. I'm like, why are you trying to, don't worry about it, but you can stay like peripherally, you know, invested in it. You know what I mean? Like you can stay here, yeah. like, don't, like I'll always welcome you into my circle. You know what I'm saying? If you're down with what I'm down and you're a good person, like, well, you know, so the, the whole community aspect, we didn't talk about this on, on this show was like, there's communities out there that are, that will support you. There's people out there. I mean, I have, we have discords full of them of just like-minded producers who are like willing in to help. They're, they're kind, they're generous they're with happy their time. To help too. They're happy to help. Yeah, absolutely. So I've said this before, but you know, like the, the audio community is, is a really top quality. Like they're just good people. It's good people all around. Everybody who I've met in this community has just been mm-hmm. really kind, really like, um, enthusiastic. And, you know, that, that can also help with motivation too, is like, maybe like, if you can't do something very well, maybe you find another producer who can do that thing better than you can do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you and got like your discord. That's a good thing that right. you brought up. Hop in there. There's like-minded people that are doing the same thing day hop in and in day our out. Discord. Like, you know? hop in it, you know, say, say, Hey, you know, I, I got this idea for a track. I, I, you know, I need, I need a baseline or it needs a, a, you know, a drum track to it. Does anybody else like this kind of music? Do you, or do you want to like collaborate on, you know, like let's make music like stars of the lid or ascendant or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like there's all different kinds of stuff there. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, there's so many different pathways you can go. And so staying involved, staying, you know, positive, I think too, like, you know, don't go, don't go down that other, that other path, which is like demotivating, you know, frustrated, things like that. We we're just oh, trying, yeah, take we're trying to point. steer you and the conversation towards like, y- there's plenty of time to get it done. Mm-hmm. You, there's plenty of ways to get it done. There's plenty of reasons to get it done. And uh, yeah, in the end, it's just going to be a better version of you, a version of you that you never even expected that would happen, right? If, if, oh, you, absolutely. Whether you're at the beginning or the, 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 the like well along on this journey, like there's always other realities out there. So realizing it's all inside of you, you just have to keep following that that path, stay inspired, mm-hmm. take inspired action. And uh, yeah, 
the rest will will come in time. <laughs> It'll just yeah, you want, you want to fix that snare that sucks? Get a piece of paper and whack it with a pencil. <laughs> Sample that shit, right? That's going to sound pretty cool. Oh, damn. Well, yeah, with that. That's a wild one. Yeah, with that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed all the tips. You know, hopefully you feel better and open your dongo. Do some cool stuff. Indeed. Cheers. We'll see you guys next time. If you're interested in supporting the podcast, please subscribe to the Signs of Life and John Audio channels on YouTube. The link for our channels is down below in the description and in the show notes. For the video version of this show, please subscribe to the Harmonic Horizons YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest episodes. For bonus content, including additional podcast material, head over to the Signs of Life Patreon page. Paid members get access to Beyond the Horizon, our new series of extended conversations with our guests, as well as several other benefits such as early access to all of his videos, exclusive ambient tutorials, over 100 preset packs for various synthesizers, one-on-one coaching for ambient and electronic music, and tons more. If you'd like to support John Audio and the work he does, head over to his YouTube channel and subscribe. You can also check out his Gumroad page for a selection of free and paid preset packs. Finally, he has a Patreon page where subscribers get access to additional content, such as exclusive music, presets for various synths such as Pigments and Diva, specialized courses, and more. Harmonic Horizons is hosted on Buzzsprout and is now available on all major platforms including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and all other major podcast directories. If you'd like to reach out to us or would like to be a guest on the show, you can contact us at harmonichorizonspodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.